What's going on people? Welcome back to another episode of Ruse Reviews and today we are chatting about Project Polaroid. Let's do this. Okay, so as most of you know, Project Polaroid uh, came out yesterday, I think. Um, I had it on pre-order for a little while. So I was quite excited when I got it through. The concept is by Julio Montoro and remastered by Phoenix Chan. So, what do you get in the box? Well, this is the box. Uh, the packaging itself is very nice. Um, I think he mentions in the tutorial who did the packaging for them. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Designed for real workers, astonished the world, Sky Members Presents 2019. Um, I'm not sure if the camera can see that, but yeah, nice white box with the silver um, writing all over it. And also you get a little silver, you get a really nice little pull tab here. Um, to the contents. I can't actually show you the contents and I'll tell you why in a second, but yeah, I thought that was a really nice, um, really nice little thing. You can hear the contents inside though. They are in there. Before we start, I'm just going to get into a little performance to show you guys what this looks like. Here it is. Okay guys, so what I want you to do is I want you to get one of these six cards in your head from this photograph, okay? One of these six cards. Do you have one in your head? Do you have one? But I want you to watch what happens. Is your card gone? Okay guys, so hopefully you saw that, um, it was just a little bit of fun that I had just messing around for you guys here. Um, I also did uh, the version with the ghost lady, where the lady, um, there's a picture of her face and you flick it and she turns into like a, a, a ghost or something like that. Uh, that is on my Instagram and you can find that at Rooster Magic UK. Just search for that in Instagram and it's my first, my latest video that's up there. So, in the box you actually get a lot of things, you can hear. There's a lot of stuff in there. So you get um, two pre-made gimmicks. One of them's um, the Statue of Liberty vanishing, and the other one's a red folded card, which you flick and you, you can pop out or whatever you want to do with it. These are pre-made by the creators themselves, so they're handmade. Everything is handmade. So that brings me to my first point. If you want to get creative and you want to make this your own, which I'm assuming any worker out there wants to do, you're going to have to get a bit arts and craftsy, okay? None of that sans mines 24 hour bullshit. Just a little bit of arts and crafts, uh, but you'll, you'll, you'll be able to get, get through it easy enough, you know, make it your own. The thing about this, as it says on the box, infinite possibilities. I bought this already with an idea in mind, and that idea is coming to fruition quite soon. But I got this yesterday, I went out and worked it last night, and brilliant, really good at what it does. There are a few, um, Little niggles that need to be sorted out, but they're within your own handing. They're only things that you can really sort out yourself. The principle behind this is quite an old principle. Some of you will have heard of this before. Subsequently, the actual gimmick used, the main sort of aspect of the gimmick used within this effect, um, you can get hold of quite readily and it's quite available for most magic shops or um, some sort of clothing shops might sell it, but mainly from magic dealers. You can make loads of these up if you want to. You get loads of extra gimmicks in here, you get ones to help make up your own, you get pre-made gimmicks. Um, what I will suggest though is obviously if you want to make this your own, you obviously do need to go and print your own photographs. These don't have to be genuine Polaroid photographs, but they do need to be a specific sort of photograph. And what they don't do in the download is teach you where to get these photographs from. You have to go and try and find and source somewhere yourself to do this. I've managed to do that myself in the UK. But yeah, to go and make it your own, you will have to go and source somewhere to make these sort of specific photographs. So the tutorial itself is about an hour and 40 minutes long, okay? So it's, it goes into complete depth of everything that you get, everything, how to make the gimmick, um, and he actually, uh, Phoenix Chan, I think it's Phoenix Chan who does the um, tutorial, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but he goes through um, how to make the gimmick and then how to set up your own, um, and, and then various methods of switching in the gimmick and sort of ringing it out. Uh, it's, it's quite cool. I mean, if, if you're a worker and you know how to perform um, these sort of effects, uh, you, you'll be well all right in switching in and ringing in these sort of gimmicks. Um, and you'll probably come up with your own ways, which I have for this, and, it's, and it, I think it's a lot cleaner. The download, again, as I say, it's taught by Phoenix Chan, and he's brilliant at sort of going through what, what needs to be done. Um, but his accent, like my, half my family is Singapore, 
Malaysian, right? So my mum's side of the family is from Singapore, and they have that sort of English, uh, sort of Asian English, fractured English sort of accent, okay? So it's easy to understand, uh, but you have to get your ear used to it. Phoenix in the download is very hard to understand his accent, and it's that goes on for an hour and 40 minutes. Now, like, usually I'm quite good at that sort of thing, like, understanding accents, but, like, it was really a struggle to sort of follow through and sort of try and make this gimmick and go through all the other details that he's going on about uh, whilst his accent being as strong as it is, is quite hard. I had to keep rewinding and having to re-listen to things. I don't know why, like, if, if, you're, if you're worried about it, he even apologises at the end, he says, if my accent's a bit too bad or you don't really understand, I do apologise. Uh, but I just don't understand why you just wouldn't teach somebody who would be able to, you know, speak English maybe with a slightly clearer accent to just do that and teach them the effects or have, have someone else who's working with you on the effects to just go through it and being able to being able to get those instructions across to anybody in a world nice and clearly is is a hundred percent key so the instructions are a little bit of a a bit of a long haul in that respect he does go into a lot of detail like all the sort of um the effects that you can do, uh, the, as I say, how to make the gimmick, um, variations, he goes through mentalism, he goes through the visual aspect of popping an object out of the card. As you can see, I've made up a gimmick with the princess card effect, so those of you that know it, it's the five cards on the screen, you think of one, you flick, or six cards, you think of one, um, and the cards change, and that card's not there anymore. Most of you guys will know how that works. I think it's really cool for lay people, it's just a little bit of a boom visual thing. Um, and the, I made up that one and the ghost lady uh, yesterday just so that I could go out and try it out. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. You know, I made up those gimmicks in about five minutes tops. So in terms of performing this effect, there is a sort of set time when you can really have this effect set up by. Okay, so uh, that, that didn't really make sense. But basically you can have this gimmick prepped for about 30 minutes before your performance maximum okay and um, that is because um, an aspect of the gimmick to use might not be working at its fullest capacity um, if held for longer than that 30 minutes but yeah so for most workers that isn't a problem because you can set it up before you go on do it at some point in your routine and then reset it either between tables or just a little break and um, the reset's very quick and very easy to do one aspect of the trick that annoyed me slightly was the fact that the, in the trailer you see a dog and a cat and they do a switch in the person's hand and boom, they're holding the dog and you're holding the cat and then they switch places, um, which is quite cool. And that's what sort of prompted me for my next um, sort of project, what I was thinking of in my head. But you don't get the dog and the cat in this package, which I found a little bit annoying. But he shows them on the download and he doesn't mention where to get them from or how to make them or anything like that. So you're pretty much in the dark about if you want to get a... Um, a dog and a cat printed up from somewhere you're just gonna to have to do it um, so I don't know why they included that in the routining without including them in the package I thought that was a little bit strange so to the best of my knowledge this method has been around for a long time okay there's been plenty of um, effects out there using similar aspects of this gimmick I don't know how close these effects are to Project Polaroid. A few that I've seen are very similar in the way that their mechanics and workings happen within the gimmick and there's no sort of crediting to them on the download, which for me, I'm a big believer in crediting all the predecessors and anyone who's ever had sort of impact in creating your trick. And if that's not on there, um, I don't think this effect warrants it to be different enough um, to have a unique enough method than any other thing that's gone before it. So I believe that some crediting should have been done in this download. But as I say, other than that, it is a brilliant download. He goes through everything. Some good and bad points. I pretty much covered all the good and bad points, really. One bad point for this effect is, for me, Phoenix's accent on the download now this isn't a harsh thing this isn't a, a major criticism but it's just something that you need to pick up if you're learning how to make an effect um, piece by piece and sort of going through all the nuances and all that thought sort of thing um, I just think they should just talk to someone how to do the effect or work with someone who could speak English maybe a little bit better and you'd be able to understand it a lot better as well as I say if you have if you struggle with fractured English anyway it's gonna be pretty hard to sort of keep going backwards and forwards so a good point 
once these gimmicks are made, you're good to go. There's no, it's very visual, as you can see in the trailers, and as you can see in my performance, it looks great when it's done. Having done this sort of thing before, people might think, oh, you can't get too close to the spectator, you can't really. But yeah, you, you can't get majorly close. They can't inspect the gimmick too much, but you can get them to touch the photograph after. There are ways of doing that. I do that myself now, which is great. So you can do you can do the switch. So what I'm doing is the dog and cat sort of thing. Um, they switch in their hands and they can actually touch the photograph after after to make sure that it is genuine and all that sort of thing. There's really not loads of heat on anything too much, especially in that scenario because they've they've switched and they're in that they want to look at the photograph that's in their hand. Another good point is you get loads in here. Like, you get a lot, bar the dog and the cat picture, but you get enough to make up your own, loads of different ideas. Um, I'm not sure where you can get refills from yet, because I reckon I'll be making up quite a few of these and just keeping them around. So that's another good point, you do get a lot in here. Another bad point is obviously if you want to get creative and you want to go and make your own and you want to go and sort of make this affect your own really, uh, you need to go out and you need to find somewhere that can print these sort of pictures. It shouldn't be too hard, there are places online that can do it, but you will need to put the work in and find that. In the UK there's a few places that may do it, I'm still sort of trying to pin down the correct one. I've got a couple of samples coming my way so I'll be able to tell people more after that. I would suggest that go and find a good place that will be able to make these sort of photographs for you and you'll be good to go. So the last point, and it is sort of a bad point, sort of a good point as well, but mainly mainly a, a cautionary point. The gimmicks, the main aspect of the gimmick, uh, the main material used in making this gimmick, you have to be very careful in handling, okay? I myself have used loads of gimmicks similar to this before, so I'm fine in keeping them in wallets, keeping them um, in, on my, in my suit for close up and that sort of thing. It's not a problem at all, but those of you that might see it for the first time might go, oh god, that's just gonna break or that's just gonna, you know, don't worry about it. It's a lot stronger than you think it is. Just go out there, try it, and you'll see what I mean. But yeah, guys, so that is Project Polaroid. If you have any questions, give me a bit of havoc in the comments, and um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Obviously, um, this is a sort of new thing, and people are sort of getting quite excited by it. But the principle has been around for quite a long time, and, you know, I I struggle to see the... The, the differences in method too much. As I say, there's not enough crediting on the download, for me anyway. Other than that, the project itself is very well thought out. Everything is well thought out in this box. The performance is what you make of it, really. As it, as it says, infinite possibilities. It's all down to you. Come up with your own ideas. Other than that, guys, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Ciao.